Lily is a hardworking student. She spends most days hanging out with friends, studying at the library, and working out at the gym. But lately, things haven't been feeling the same for Lily. Hanging out with friends seems as more of a chore. Studying becomes too difficult, and she finds herself no longer prioritizing going to the gym. Lily's family begins to notice her changed behavior, and they inform her of a new therapy option: psychotherapy. What is psychotherapy? Also known as talk therapy, psychotherapy is a method of treatment used to help individuals maintain and/or improve their mental health. More formally, it is defined as an interpersonal process designed to bring about modifications of feelings, cognitions, attitudes, and behavior, which have proved troublesome to the person seeking help from a trained professional. So, how does it work? With a trusted therapist, psychotherapy can help individuals overcome pain from their past by developing coping strategies for the future. This helps individuals define their goals, which can aid in clarifying their identity and what they want out of life. Successful psychotherapy is dependent on a supportive and comfortable relationship between the patient and therapist. Psychotherapy can be offered to individuals, families, or to groups. It can be both short, up to sixteen sessions, and long term, dealing with more long-standing, complex issues. Furthermore, the format of treatment will also differ in terms of length, setting, and the extent to which non-psychosocial treatment, such as medications, are offered. So, what is its aim? The aim of psychotherapy is to allow the patient to discuss and express their feelings, attitudes, and behaviors with a trusted therapist to promote adaptive methods of coping with certain situations. What are some different forms of psychotherapy? Psychotherapy comes in a lot of different forms, but today we'll be focusing on cognitive behavioral therapy, interpersonal therapy, and psychodynamic therapy. Cognitive behavioral therapy is driven by a common sense model, based on the relationships that surround cognition, motion, and behavior. It emphasizes three aspects of cognition, which include automatic thoughts, cognitive distortions, and underlying beliefs. Cognitive behavioral therapy is goal-oriented, which allows the approach to be hands-on and practical, whereby the therapist and patient work collaboratively with the goal to modify behavioral and thinking patterns to bring change to the patient's life. Interpersonal therapy is driven by a diagnosis-targeted intervention. This means that the patients are assigned a sick role during sessions. This helps patients define their problems as treatable medical conditions by linking their distress to their interpersonal situations. The work of the therapist in interpersonal therapy stems through helping patients identify their stressors and relating them to their symptoms of distress. The therapist will also work by encouraging the patient to propose their own solutions to address their stressors. Psychodynamic therapy is driven by the unconscious and conscious mind. It focuses on how unconscious processes can be manifested into a patient's present behavior. Its goal is to promote the patient's self-awareness and understanding of the influence the past can have on present behavior. The psychodynamic approach enables the client to examine unresolved conflicts and symptoms that present themselves from the past to help establish coping resources for the future. Who can benefit from psychotherapy? Children, adults, and adolescents with difficulties coping with daily life, the impact of trauma, medical illness or loss, death of a loved one, and individuals with specific mental health disorders like depression and anxiety can benefit from psychotherapy. However, it is important to note that psychotherapy may not work for everyone. It is always important to check in with a health professional before starting treatment and to always explore your options. How accessible is psychotherapy? Because psychotherapy is considered a non-physician service, it has limited funding. Insurance programs given to those employed often pay for these services, or patients pay out of pocket. Prices can range between four hundred to fifteen hundred dollars annually, covering between two to eight therapy sessions on average. 
This is a problem because low-income Canadians who do not have employment-based benefits will have limited access to psychotherapy. This, as a result, is why psychotherapy is only accessible to those who can afford it or have employment benefits. What are the current wait times for psychotherapy? In Ontario, a patient can expect to wait between six months to one year to seek a psychotherapist. Children and youth, however, experience the longest wait times of two and a half years before beginning psychotherapy. So what has been done to address accessibility and wait times for psychotherapy? In 2017, the Government of Canada set to invest $5 billion over the next 10 years to improve access to psychotherapy, allowing low-income Canadians to have access to psychotherapy. In 2019, Ontario's budget committed $25 million to support development of Pan-Canada Suicide Prevention Services. Community-based mental health delivery can also reduce wait times. This type of service is delivered through community social gatherings or just by incorporating a mental health professional at a health clinic. Furthermore, about 80% of Canadians rely on their primary physician for mental health resources and treatments. However, only 23% of physicians feel prepared to give out advice. Thus, being able to integrate mental health help into the physician's office can help deliver early interventions which can increase accessibility to mental health help. This concludes our video on psychotherapy. If you are thinking about seeking out psychotherapy, please consult with a trained health professional. Stay tuned for more videos on the Demystifying Medicine YouTube channel.